do try, believe it or not, to separate my criticism of religion from my criticism of the religious. In the same way you wouldn't hold someone who has the flu accountable for the fact that they're ill, you know? But that's increasingly difficult. Over the weekend, a hashtag became trending over Twitter. And it says highlighted a huge bunch of issues. And the hashtag is Hang Ayaz Nizami. Ayaz Nizami being an atheist blogger in Pakistan who people want to execute for blasphemy. Lest we forget him, Sina Agan uh, from Iran has also been sentenced to death this weekend um, in Iran for the same thing, insulting the prophet on social media. Now you're going to say, not all, and I'm going to agree with you to an extent, not all, but a rather significant amount of people in Pakistan, in Iran, globally, are fine with this kind of thing happening. And they're, yeah, kind of fine with terrorism and people running down huge numbers of people in cars or trucks for the sake of Islam. So, what am I supposed to think? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to ignore it? Because, eh, it's not all of them. It's not all Muslims. It's not all Nazis. Why make a fuss about any of them? Because it is a significant number, and it's something hard-coded into the ideology, into the faith. This arrogant disregard for anyone and everything else. This idea that an insult to a long-dead paedophile and bandit is somehow worse than an insult to your closest and dearest family. And even then, even if someone insulted your closest and dearest family, that wouldn't justify killing anyone, would it? Swinging a fist at most, maybe. Hurling an insult back, but... Murdering people? No. That's not moral. Um, so, what, what am I supposed to think about this? What am I supposed to do about this? Why aren't any of the other supposed liberal left-wing people outraged about this? Why is it being left to the right wing and the old outlier like me on the left to say that this is fucking terrible and that we should be speaking out against it? That we should be offering these people asylum in the West? And why are the social media companies kowtowing to this? Nizami's Facebook page is gone. You know, Pakistan has been pressuring Facebook to censor blasphemy for them online. Why should you go with that? If you want to participate in the 21st century, then you can damn well try and catch up with 21st century morals, surely. And Twitter. Twitter is able to be incredibly agile about practically meaningless and harmless trolling or mildly right-wing hashtags or whatever. It can censor them, it can shadow ban people, you know, it can suspend people's Twitter uh, accounts for you know, 24 or 48 hours or, or whatever, remarkably rapidly when it's something relatively minor. But when practically an entire nation seems to be calling out on social media for the hanging of someone for the offence of not believing what they do or criticising what they believe, nothing. Crickets. Can't deal with it. Can't uh, can't get onto it. You know, no, no effort has been made. It's, oh, this morning it was still auto-completing. Um, the tag was still running through incredibly fast, though the, the trolls and protesters have found it now, so that's something. And no, nothing seems to be done. I mean, it, it, this is this unquestionable. This is the mass calling for the murder of someone over nothing. And they can't do anything. But you mock a feminist or give some pushback to a, to a shitty article someone has written. And, and they're all over that shit remarkably quickly. 
but an actual case of hate speech, an actual case of directly calling for murder, speech that genuinely meets the harm principle, can't do anything about that. But the double standard is breathtaking and obvious. Yeah, and these are examples of why internet anonymity is necessary and why your anti-troll measures, your attempts to censor and control the internet, your attempt to tie people's real identities to their online activity, is going to get motherfuckers killed. So how many people are you willing to sacrifice just so that someone doesn't call you a cunt on Twitter? How many Pakistani bloggers are you fine with being hung? How many gay kids in wherever in the Middle East are you fine with being flung off a building because they were outed because of your security measures? How, how many deaths is okay to spare you the enormous effort of going click mute? And now we've got YouTube censoring people as well for saying remarkably mild and innocuous things compared to kill the blasphemer at the behest of advertisers advertisers who on conventional media are perfectly happy to put their advertisements on the next page or on the break between stories about war or observations about extremism or interviews with extremists and yet shy away from having their adverts on YouTube videos there's a whole bunch of shit here going on all interconnected, all crap. And it all relates to how we deal with this new media. People's sensitivities, people's stupidities, and the fact that we have effectively put 21st century communications technology in the hands of 16th century Puritans. But you tell me how I am supposed to be liberal and tolerant in the face of mass murder and enormous calls on a national scale for the death of someone for just going, eh, not really that convinced Mohammed was divine or the best person in the world. You tell me. Zang.